Hello and welcome to The Print. I'm Akanksha Mishra and this is Scientifix where I will be taking you through this week's top science news from across the world. Our first story today is about whether the moon is actually geologically dead or not. Previous studies on the lunar surface led us to believe that most of the processes that led to the formations of the ridges, the craters and the other geological features of the moon were at least 2 to 3 billion years old. Now, however, we have evidence from the far side of the moon, the less explored side, which indicates that certain landforms were formed less than 300 million years ago and were active up to 160 million years ago. This is very young in geological time, especially given that the moon itself is 4.5 billion years old. The scientists discovered this by analyzing 266 previously unknown ridges on the moon. It's a huge step towards understanding the tectonic processes that have shaped the lunar surface. The next story for today is based on a study in Science Journal, published on 30th January, which traces the history of Shep herding back to 11,000 years ago. More importantly, the study uses DNA analysis of domesticated and wild sheep to show how even as far back as 8,000 years ago, humans were choosing and breeding sheep flocks based on their coat colours. The study by scientists of Trinity College in Dublin showed how the DNA of domesticated sheep in a Turkish village from 11,000 years ago was genetically consistent with sheep DNA from later periods from the nearby regions. However, one interesting aspect of the DNA analysis is that the different varieties of sheep DNA found by scientists often coincided with patterns of human migration. There was a massive migration noticed in sheep DNA from Eurasia to Europe some 3000 years ago during the Bronze Age, which coincides with human migrations during the same periods, indicating that when people moved, they brought their flocks with them. Moving on to a recent study by French, Swiss and Indian scientists on the Glacier Lake Outburst Flood or GLOF event in Sikkim in 2023. The scientists analyzed the dynamics of the flood using satellite images, digital models of the elevation in Sikkim and also the extent of the disaster and the damage. One of the main findings was that the frozen moraines, which is the mass of rocks and sediment that collapsed into the lake causing the flood, had been observed to be unstable for years, moving up to 15 meters every year. The main recommendation of the study was to have coordinated early warning systems in place, especially in Himalayan regions which are more prone to climate change effects. Increased temperatures will also increase the risk of gloves in Himalayas, which means that policymakers need to be more prepared in terms of infrastructure and in terms of resilience. Finally, our last story for the day categorically shows how polar bear populations in the western Hudson Bay in Canada have declined because of the loss in sea ice. The study which looks at polar bear population between 1979 to 2021 found how they have declined by 50% and even in existing polar bears, the average size and mass has suffered a decline. The scientists created a model that correlated polar bear deaths to sea ice through the loss of hunting periods, thus leading to less access to food and therefore less energy. The cubs and mothers were especially vulnerable due to this rapid loss of sea ice, since litter sizes have dropped by 11% and without enough milk production, cubs have a lower chance of survival. While declining polar bear populations have been concerning for years, this study confirmed that there is one single reason for their decline the loss of food and energy because of melting sea ice. That's all we have for today. Thank you for tuning into The Print.